San Diego 6 News presents What's Brewing. We imagined a world that would have great beer. The tide rising before our very eyes. I think it taps into something obsessive. The obsession exploding in San Diego. And we explore the hype. From growing hops. It's kind of like Jack and the Beanstalk. To yeast born by the billions. The cells replicate over and over and over again. As ingredients evolve. We've aged persimmons in this beer. Local microbrews gain notoriety. This was for my IPA. And more beer businesses open doors. With people around the world embracing the culture of craft beer. Hi, I'm Nettie Irampour with What's Brewing. We're talking about a revolution here over what people want to pour into their glass. And it all starts right here with hops. They're taking a few simple ingredients and creating that craft beer that's grown so much in popularity. In fact, nationwide, we've surpassed historic levels with more than 3,200 breweries and counting. And they're turning to America's finest city for some of the finest ingredients and best brewmasters. <laughs> Cheers. 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 With a cult following, the carefully crafted brew rising the tide. This is the very beginning of the process for us. It all starts with malted barley. Our first stop, also one of San Diego's first, a stone brewing in Escondido. It's where we start mashing. Mashing the act of boiling water and grains to separate the sugars, all to feed a special strain of yeast developed just for stone. It eats up all of those fermentable sugars that we got from malted barley. And now for the man some may call a celebrity in the craft beer world, Stone's co-founder and CEO, Greg Cook. Well, I'm gonna pour you a Stone Levitation now. Revolutionizing beer culture, Cook and his partner Steve Wagner created recipes in their kitchen some 20 years ago. The rest, a whirlwind of malted barley and hops making sweet history on a global scale. We imagined a world that would have great beer commonly available to people. Now I want to put it all in perspective. I'm standing among stone kegs. This is a size a lot of people are familiar with. Their very first full year in 1997, Stone made 2,400 kegs. Now they're making more than 500,000 of them every year. San Diego now boasts more than 100 breweries. With all that beer flow comes a flood of money, bringing in nearly $1 billion a year in sales. And tourists are coming here specifically for beer. Perfect Christmas present. I wrapped up a bunch of stone and he opened it and then it was like, we're going there. It's like a 10 day beer tasting marathon for us. We had like a battle plan, like we were going to war. Brewmasters like Cosmo Sorrentino at Monkey Pop are getting so creative with their kegs, he impresses even the pickiest of palates. We did a Belgian double with coffee and lemon zest. We've done a mole beer where I've used 25 spices. We've made creamsicle ale with vanilla and orange. And San Diego's only female brewmaster and brewery owner, Liz Chisholm, is getting crafty with her tart saisons at Kearney Mesa's newly opened Council Brewing. 15 minutes before we opened, we had a line out the door. People like banging on the door. And they're like, let us in, let us in. And we're like, oh crap. What I feel like having is whatever he's just brewed up. This industry explosion keeping this beer writer's hands full. I think it taps into something obsessive. No shortage of stories, no shortage of interest. Brandon Hernandez spreading word of this liquid gold through his web of articles, reviews, and a book on every local brewery. If you show up on any brewery on any given weekend, you will most definitely run into people who are just passing through on their way to one, two, three, four, five. But big names like Miller Coors and Anheuser-Busch still have nearly 90% of the nation's beer tab. For local brewery owners, that could simply mean Mean more room for growth as they set their sights on a potential future macro brew takeover. Cheers. 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 Cheers to all of you. Here at SD Golden Hop Farm, they are experimenting with this one and a half acre beautiful lot using all organic products, all for a labor of love. Growing among the hills of Fallbrook, an ingredient you don't often see. It definitely smells like beer. Yeah, I just love smelling them. Wow, it really tastes like an IPA. <laughs> Hops, the flower that brings out the aroma in your beer. And then on this side, we have Nugget. This is a US variety. It's more of like a dual purpose hop. And varieties like Cascade, Chinook, wind their way upwards because that's where Gary and Corey Jondro guide them to go. And then we encourage them to grow up the ropes. And ours will grow about 15 feet and they'll just continue until they get to the top and then kind of come over. Considered a wild weed in parts of the world, it grows 8 to 10 inches a night. It's kind of like Jack and the Beanstalk. It's really exciting. You know, we go to sleep exhausted. We wake up the next morning and the plant is tall. This organic farm owned by an environmentally conscious couple is all an experiment. 
Named SD Golden Hop Farm after their golden Rocky, who roams among the greenery freely. They started about a year and a half ago, one of about a dozen hop farms in San Diego County, now among the largest. But with one and a half acres for production, they're not considered big by any means. They become like our babies, you know. <laughs> you, you watch them grow. Fairly new to the farming world, it's the popularity of San Diego's beer scene that reeled them in. The beer industry was just exploding down here. I said, why not be part of it? Most brewers get their hops from the Pacific Northwest, where it's rainier and chillier, better conditions for these cones. Our soils are different. We have a hotter climate, so we have to mulch all our soils. And San Diego's drought isn't helping. Watering is a challenge in San Diego currently with the drought. We did get cut by the municipal water. Fortunately for these flowers, the Jondros do not need to turn on their drip water irrigation for the entire year. We only water four months out of the year. By the end of the summer, they'll hold harvest parties and sell their labor of love to home brewers and local breweries like Culture, Rough Draft, Amplified, and Monkey Paw. We're growing more of a boutique hop variety. We also want it to be used wet, which is fresh and tasteful. Bigger breweries who typically use dry hop pellets are requesting the Jondro's wet hops for their special batches. It's looking beautiful, actually. I mean, it's really a nice dark yellow. A lot of people, the brewers, I mean, will mix them up like this. Proof their hardworking ways. Touch your hands. It's like you feel like you feel like it's glue. Just touch my palm. Yeah, yeah. it's sticky. <laughs> are sticking. Just like the microbrew scene across San Diego, their business expected to blossom. Coming up next on What's Brewing. And that individual cell will just replicate itself a bunch of times. Don't let its size fool you. Microscopic organisms make a big impact. From a petri dish to your glass, the science behind beer. This is where the magic happens. Try this at home. How you can brew it yourself, either at a brewery or in your garage. We meet the nation's most award-winning home brewer. Plus, hops on the harbor, beer pairings by way of the water, or how about a bus as we explore beer tours? Are you ready for some beer trivia? First question, when making beer, what is an Erlenmeyer flask used for? A, to measure the alcohol, B, to energize the yeast, C, to taste test, D, to soak the grain, E, to impress scientists. The answer when we come back. Welcome back. Now for your answer. When making beer, what is an Erlenmeyer flask used for? The answer is B, to energize the yeast. When you go beer tasting at places like Helms here in Kearney Mayside, you have a lot of different beers to choose from. They have the OG Wheat, Captain's Pale Ale, Wicked Sin IPA, Beer Chino Porter, and Chocolate Stout. You can tell I've been here before. And yes, all the different beers taste differently, and it's mostly in part because of a teeny tiny microscopic organism. A lot of the breweries across San Diego count on what happens inside a Petri dish at a place called White Labs. A good beer starts here. These are what we use to store the yeast on for a short term. With a microscopic cell in a petri dish. And that individual cell will just replicate itself a bunch of times until it forms this nice colony. Head of lab operations Nava Parker shows us the yeast making steps at White Labs. Each strain of yeast makes a different flavor of beer. This one is a Belgian strain. So this one would have pretty unique flavor characteristics. From here the colonies go into a sugary liquid where they eat and grow, eat and grow. They make exact copies of themselves over and over and over again. Big breweries like Stone Brewing in Escondido turned to White Labs at their inception in the 1990s to ask for their own proprietary blend. Whenever they need it, we'll grow it up for them. Now breweries and home brewers all over the world are counting on creations in this very lab. We can collect it, package it, and then ship it out to a customer. To make the flavors beer drinkers can toast to. White Labs also has its own tasting room where you can try out different strains of yeast in the form of beer. You can get a Belgian 545, a Porter 007. One of their most popular would have to be the 001 California Ale. That's the strain of yeast used in most San Diego IPAs. If you worked at White Labs, you kind of nerd out on the numbers. Each strain has a number, not a name. The 500s are the Belgian strains, 300s are the wheat strains, 800s would be lagers. So there is a classification system. Brewer. 
Joe Kurowski adds different strains of yeast to sugar water, known as wort. The yeast eats the sugars in what's called fermentation, and its waste is actually the alcohol, and that is how beer is born. We bank over 500 strains of yeast, 80 plus are in regular production. Would you say you've tasted all the strains to know? I'm working on it. You're working on it? Yeah. <laughs> People can taste each different strain's effect on different beers. We've kind of grown up with the whole brewing movement. From a handful of employees in 1995 to about 100 now. Mayor Kevin Falconer just declared June 11th. Light Labs Day in the city of San Diego. To celebrate their 20 years in business. As the craft beer craze keeps brewing, so do the requests to keep growing. Back here at Helms, they would put that yeast into these tanks where it would ferment for about a couple weeks. Now you can also get creative with this craft at home. You don't have to buy these massive vessels. You can do it on a much smaller scale and you can make your own beer for just about a hundred bucks. A box this size is all you would need to uh to do a five gallon batch. Homebrew kits are literally flying off the shelves at the home brewer in North Park. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> Uh, this is our yeast refrigerator. Yeast, the crucial ingredient in beer making, but first manager Sean Martinez will turn that yeast yellow. And we'll put the yeast in there and it'll energize it. Oh, we're working out our yeast, that way when it gets into the beer, it's ready to eat, it's ready to go. It eats up the sugars that form after the grains get boiled. By a few other important parts like the tubing, the kettle, the fermenter, some hops, even some added flavoring. <laughs> that way we can have some delicious beer. Plenty of beer lovers are in fact trying this at home. One batch I just was totally hooked. Kelsey McNair started boiling up brews in the early 2000s. Brewing with a small pot on the stove in the kitchen and making a mess. After a few years. Hops are a component of beer that can drive a lot of the flavor. Of this labor of love. It took over the whole garage. I've got stainless steel everywhere. I make stouts, porters, sour beers, blonde ale. He learned from other local brewers, podcasts, articles, and as a member of Quaff. That's San Diego's home brewing club, which has catapulted to some 400 members. And the people are some of the most wonderful people you'll ever meet. This was for uh, my IPA. This was for um, an Imperial Porter. He didn't win just one or two, but three gold medals at the National Home Brewers Association Conference, a wall of recognition better than any other home brewer in the nation. Since Kelsey has this more advanced setup, normally he would mash the grains in here and then separate the sugar from the husk, and that's what becomes wort. So right now we're boiling up some wort before it has been fermented by yeast. Mastering the art of beer making, and now Kelsey He's opening North Park Beer Company in January. My flagship IPA that I've won all the awards with is actually called Hop Fu, like Kung Fu. He's coming up with the beer list now, testing things out in his garage, of course. I had to try one myself. All right, cheers. Tasting his delicious homemade porter, and I can see why Kelsey's now a common name in San Diego's brewing scene. You meet a brewer, and they're just like you. They started in the garage, and they had a dream, and they followed it. Proof that you can go from buying a few parts here to creating all you can drink beer for your home or turning that beer into your career. If you don't want to fill your home up with all that equipment, you can DIY here at Helms. That's brew it yourself. Jenny Siebel, you started this a couple years ago. Right. You guys bring the pots, the ingredients, the bottles, and beer lovers just bring the labor. Tell us how this works. Exactly. So we DIY, we actually host craft beer workshops. So we're kind of teaching the public how to home brew. All our brewers show up and everybody has their own brewing station. So everybody's gonna brew one gallon of beer. They brew it simultaneously as a group. It's about a three to four hour workshop. And during the workshop, we also do a brewery tour here at Helms. And we also do a tutorial so that they learn how to bottle their own beer at home and they take home their bottling kit as well. And what kind of ingredients do you bring? We have all the grains you'll need, all the malt extract, all the hops that you'll need. So everything's here. All you really have to do is just show up ready to brew. Nice. And can they name it themselves? Like pick what they want to call it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. People get very creative with that. <laughs> and can they drink beer while they do it? Yes, definitely. <laughs> We're brewing in a functioning production brewery, so we have cold beer on tap. And Helms is more than happy to serve that to you. There is a byproduct to all this beer making. It's in the form of this spent grain where the sugar water is actually extracted from the grain itself. And a San Diego-based company, Doggy Beer Bones, actually turns all of that into dog food. They actually use Helms' spent grain to create their own personalized doggy treats and they do this for various breweries around town. Also, ranchers and farmers come and pick up crate loads of this stuff and they use it to feed their cows, their pigs, or for fertilizer, so really none of this goes to waste. Stay tuned for much more on What's Brewing. We had a great time going and meeting with each brewery, tasting the beers, and then putting together a menu that really went with each one.
beer pairings. When your brew brings out the best in your dinner, we'll take you to Hops on the Harbor. They were drinking, and I was like, woo, we really need some help. So many beers to try, but please do it safely. How to roll from one hot spot to the next without getting behind the wheel. There was multiple times where I had to take her clothes to the dry cleaning because it was in the closet and it blew up all over the clothes. From her closet to council brewing, how Liz Chisholm, who some consider a celebrity in the beer scene, is paving the way for women in this industry. Time for another beer trivia question. How many bombers are in a standard U.S. barrel of beer? A, none, B, 112, C, 180, D, 1,902, or E, 192? The answer after the break. Welcome back. Ready for the answer? How many bombers are in a standard U.S. barrel of beer? The answer is C, 180. Each barrel holds 31 gallons of beer, or two full kegs. That equals 180 bombers, which have 22 ounces in each. Here's something very special to toast to. Hops on the Harbor. This is with flagship cruises and events. Look what they do. Beer pairings every Friday night. They pick a different brewery every month to work with so you can enjoy all this great food. Heather's with flagship. Tell us what you have here. So these are some of our favorites. Ballast Point Calico is a really malty, sweet amber ale. We've got a barbecued chicken with grilled corn, grilled peaches, relish. Then we've got our dill potatoes to kind of bite that a little bit. Cornbread, stone IPA is a really citrus the hoppy IPA. That goes well with the sirloin. We've got caramelized onion, creamy blue cheese, and a build your own mashed potato bar. Then we've got on the lighter side, the St. Archer Blonde. It's a cold style ale. We've got linguine with steamed clams, garlic bread. It's such a classic summer mix. Then for dessert, we've got the Ballast Point Victory at Sea, which is a dessert all on its own, but goes great with this chocolate mousse cake here. What a special thing for people to be able to enjoy San Diego's craft beer with good food and it matches really well. You did a good job pairing this yeah, up. We had a great time going and meeting with each brewery, tasting the beers and then putting together a menu that really went with each one and the flavors that each had. So forget wine pairing, it's all about beer pairing. It is, <laughs> I've learned so much about it. it. It's a lot of fun. San Diego is a great place to enjoy craft beer. Thank you very much, Heather. And you can enjoy different types of beer, but you don't always have to go by way of the water. There is a very safe way to get from brewery to brewery. So now let's explore the business of beer tours. Employees of San Diego-based BizX are headed on an adventure of beer exploration. First things first, 21 and up only. And once everyone's all aboard... I've got a quick waiver, one for everyone to fill out. Bus driver Dyson Larick begins our beer tour. Okay, we chose uh, two breweries and a, with one of them having food. BizX holds monthly employee gatherings, but this is their first such informational imbibing. It's a three-hour tour, so that appealed to us as well. Brewery tours of San Diego can take from a handful up to 200 people from place to place all across the county, sometimes hitting up four or five breweries in one day. Ballast Point now has four breweries in San Diego. Now at Ballast Point in Scripps Ranch, Dyson first hands everyone a beer before taking us all to a spot not all beer drinkers can see. And here we're able to see the bottling and packaging of Ballast Point beer. We're behind the scenes because we're part of the brewery tour, which means the driver then becomes a tour guide, meaning he knows the history and inner workings of nearly all local breweries. What they're bottling right now is their habanero skull pin. Hop out of your way here. After all, the beer tour biz has a symbiotic relationship with the brewery biz. The tour guides give the brewer a heads up they're en route, and the brewer is happy to serve them. I'll pass around some grain for you. In the mess tun, they're basically making an oatmeal. It's called steeping. They're going to steep that grain in around 155 degree water for about an hour. The more grain that you put in there, the more sugar you're going to extract out the higher alcohol content you're gonna get. Brewery tours of San Diego started with an idea that, well, brewed up right here at Ballast Point when the owner worked here nearly a decade ago. People were coming in and they were going place to place, they are getting lost, and they were drinking, and I was like, woo, we really need some help. It's the only way to go if you're going to consume lots of alcohol on those tours. You definitely need a ride for going to the breweries. <laughs> they started in 2007. We've grown with the community, honestly. Just as the beer scene in San Diego exploded, so did their business. And for the BizX team of web designers and developers, it's not a bad way to spend a work day. Probably the coolest day at work I've ever had. So far, you've seen quite a few of the breweries around town, but there are more than 100 of them now. We've made a map for you. You can see how many businesses
businesses have dedicated themselves to this craft. It's no wonder we're considered the Napa Valley of beer. And out of all of those breweries, there's only one where a woman is the owner and brewmaster. So this business, not just a man's world, it's certainly reeling in plenty of ladies. Sitting behind a desk and like answering emails like, ah! no, no thank you, that's not me. <laughs> Instead, she'll toast to her true passion. I literally pick up 55 pound sacks of grain and dump them in. As San Diego's only female brewmaster and brewery owner, Liz Chisholm is proof beer making is not reserved just for men. Ah, here it is. With her countless recipes. 20 pounds of roasted barley. Liz carefully crafts beer for Council Brewing. Her husband, Curtis Chisholm, handles the books, while Liz handles the milling, boiling, fermenting, flavoring, and aging. I always say, like, Liz is in her kitchen, you know, and she's always taking me out of the kitchen. A dynamic duo now seen as celebrities. I've heard about them for ages now, and their saisons definitely have an awesome reputation. earning several awards prior to opening their Kearney Mesa location in May of 2014. Liz is an inspiration for members of the San Diego Sud Sorority, a woman's beer making group founded by Julie Goldenberg. Women can come and share their homebrew and critique it. The group quadrupled in size in a year and a half. You know these women are dedicated to beer when they have their book club meeting at a brewery. They say the days of beer being a man's drink, well, that's nothing but history. Another women of beer group Julie helps organize is called Biblioholics Anonymous, talking brews and books at Tiger Tiger Tavern, a gal's gathering men can attend if they sit separately. I think it wasn't necessarily sexy or interesting to be like, oh, I'm going to have a beer. Whereas now I think it's getting more of a better reputation. It's getting to be more of something to be proud of. It's also natural for women who enjoy tasting to turn to creating. I feel like women are very creative with flavors, implementing those into beer. But even a pro like Liz admits to a few blunders while home brewing. There was multiple times where I had to take her clothes to the dry cleaning because it was in the closet and it blew up all over the clothes. <laughs> After years of trial and error, her skills boil over into a success. We've aged persimmons in this beer. Now sharing her many flavors with a much larger audience. And now since we're on California Spirit flagships yacht, we're gonna cruise away with our craft beer. But first, we just want to say thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. What's, What's brewing? brewing? Woohoo! Cheers. Cheers.